The poster is one of the most straightforward pieces of visual communication there is, and it's also one of the oldest forms of visual communication. Originating back in the late 1800s with the invention of the printing press, visual messages could be easily printed and distributed. And with the invention of the three stone lithographic process, printing incorporated more color where posters were used for some of the earliest forms of advertising. Today, posters come in a wide range of sizes, large to small, but will all seek the same goal. A poster is typically one piece of paper, either portrait or landscape with the purpose to attract attention, arouse curiosity, communicate a specific message, make an impression, and invoke a reaction. The function of the poster is typically to be seen at a distance and is used to either advertise or communicate a specific message. If successful, a poster can influence a call to action to find out more, make a transaction, or change perception. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Gareth David. I'm a designer with over 15 years experience. I run my own design business, Gareth David Studio, where I specialize in logo and brand identity design. And I also manage this YouTube channel where I like to share my knowledge and experience with aspiring designers. In this video, we are going to look at what makes a good poster design. I'm going to take you through a quick presentation where we can look at some good examples of what makes for a good poster design. So let's get into it. So what makes a good poster design? So the first factor that makes a good poster design is a clear sense of visual hierarchy. If there are too many elements competing against each other in a composition and there is no clear order and contrast between the elements, then it may be hard to navigate. Imagine three people all talking at you at the same time, saying different things. It would be hard to understand and make out who to listen to first, right? Well, the same can be said in design. A busy poster design can be off-putting and fail in its purpose to attract and communicate effectively. A good poster design will consist of at least three levels of hierarchy. The primary hook, the secondary hook, and supportive elements. So here are two good examples of posters that demonstrate a very clear hierarchy. Here we have a famous movie poster by Saul Bass and a well-known poster by A.M. Cassandri. The first level is the primary hook. This tends to be whatever element appears to be the most clear, legible, and has the most contrast in a composition. The primary hook is the visual element that will work the hardest, with the aim to catch the eye and establish the starting point in a composition to trigger curiosity and draw one in closer. So in these examples, we see that it's the large visual image in each poster that works as the primary hook here. In the first poster, we are initially drawn to the large illustration at the top. This is because it's the largest element with the most contrast. And the same applies to the next example where the ship illustration is large in comparison with its surrounding elements. The next level is the secondary hook. This will typically be a smaller element that appears close or near to the primary hook to support a message. The secondary hook aims to establish flow in a composition. In the first example, it's the names of the actors starring in the movie that we are drawn to after the primary hook, as these are slightly smaller. In the next example, once we see the huge ship, we are drawn down to read the header. The levels after are supportive elements. Now, in any given design, there may be few or many supportive elements. These will be elements in a composition one will look at once one has noticed and acknowledged the primary and secondary hook. The supportive elements will aim to add further visual information to a composition to continue the flow of visual information. In the first example, the supportive elements are the smaller subtitle at the top and the footer elements at the base. The same is seen here in the next example. Here, the supportive elements are the smaller subtitle at the top and the footer elements at the base. Now, it's practical when digesting information to have a sense of direction. A beginning, middle and end needs to be clear to convey a clear message and lead the viewer. Used effectively, hierarchy can make a complex message simple, create impact, and a big overall impression. A clear visual hierarchy and contrast between the elements is important because it can create a clear structure and make a message legible. Now, hierarchy is one of the most important factors that makes a good poster design. If a poster establishes a clear hierarchy, then it will generally work well. However, another key factor that makes a good poster design is consideration of placement. 
Now a poster design is not necessarily a one size fits all solution. There are a variety of spaces where a poster design may be placed, and often this can determine the nature of a poster's design. A well-designed poster should grab your attention and be easily read, understood in any given space. However, some spaces will allow for varying degrees of complexity. For example, if a poster is placed outdoors, on a wall, on the street or on a billboard, then it may be seen fleetingly and thus require a design to be much more impactful, to work well to attract the eye from a distance. Simplicity will be a big factor for posters that are seen in an outdoor context. The elements may be larger and have higher contrast with more use of space to draw one in. Now, if a poster is to be placed inside a studio, a gallery, office or school space, or at a train station, when one may be able to spend more time observing, in this instance, a poster can still work to attract attention from a distance and still be simple, however, can be more complex and could include more information. Like hierarchy, simplicity is one of the most important factors that makes a good poster design. If a poster is simple and is designed with its intended placement in mind, then it will work well to communicate clearly. Another key factor that makes a good poster design is dynamic use of type, image, shape and form. Now a poster can be simple or a poster can be more dynamic. A good poster can be simple and use typography in a clear, literal way to communicate a message in the most practical way. A great poster will attempt to use both image and type together to attract attention and communicate a message in a more visual way. However, the right combination of visual elements can speak a thousand words. A brilliant poster will attempt to use image, type, shape and form together poetically to communicate more dynamically. It's these types of posters that are more memorable and make the most impression, capture the imagination and influence a call to action the most. So another key factor that makes a good poster design is balance between the elements. Now it's very common for posters to include multiple visual elements in a design and may choose to either use a large image or large type to attract the eye and deliver a message. However, some posters utilize a combination of image, type, shape and form beautifully to enhance a message and make an impact. A good poster will have synergy between all the visual elements in a composition, including color, image, shape, texture, and type. A poster may contain all such visual elements, but will need to balance them well in order to retain balance and present a clear hierarchy. A good poster will have a good balance between its visual elements, where they don't compete against each other too much, working together to form a cohesive message. So the last key factor that makes a good poster design is create a specific impression. Now remember, a poster is not simply decoration. A poster will typically have a purpose to inspire and influence a call to action to a specific target audience. Ultimately, a poster will have a goal, be that to educate, change perception, find out more, or influence a transaction. A good poster will do well to cater to a target market and be clear on what it wants the viewer to comprehend. It may sound simple and obvious, but a good poster will incorporate the right combination of image, type, shape and form to influence a clear call to action and invoke emotions. Like using the right words to communicate and articulate a message, we want to use the right visual vocabulary with the right tone of voice. As simple as a poster can be, the right image or combination of image and type can speak a thousand words. For maximum results, the poster will need maximum impact. The bigger the impact, the greater the impression, which ultimately creates curiosity and a memorable impression. A good poster will do this well, increasing the chances of influence to trigger a call to action, either on the spot or later on. So in conclusion, the key factors that make a good poster design are, one, clear sense of hierarchy, two, consideration of placement, three, dynamic use of type, image, shape, and form, four, balance between the elements, and five, create a specific impression. Those are five key factors that make a good poster design. Well, I hope you enjoyed this design theory lesson. If you did, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of more design lesson videos like this in future. Now, this lesson is part of a bigger series on poster design and part of my poster design ebook. If you'd like to take a closer look at the examples I demonstrated in this video and learn more about poster design with tutorials on how to make a poster design and undertake a poster design challenge, you can invest in the poster design ebook. Links are in the description. 
Now this video was created for all my members of the GDS Design School community. If you're not a member and you would like to join the GDS Design School community, where we chat about design, give each other feedback, and where I set design challenges, you are all welcome to join for free. Again, links are in the description and I look forward to seeing you there. So until my next design lesson, unleash your creativity and I'll see you next time.